So Brian, a positive night for Irish football tonight. Loads of young talent coming through. Uh, so is that encouraging at this time? Yes, well, I think so. But what influence the young players will have in the short term remains to be seen. It's, it's, it's a big step to go from making your debut in the Premier League and scoring a goal or two to becoming a regular player at that level. Or, for instance, like Adam Maidan scoring three goals in a cup match. Will he, will he start in the Premier League the weekend? We'll have to wait and see. So these young players that have emerged in the last... Uh, this, this year in particular, and their potential, there's, a, there, there, there's other steps to be made to fulfil that potential and to become um, good Premiership players or top Championship players and and then ultimately from Irish point of view senior international players that are capable of helping us to win games because that's what it's about at the end. Potential is okay and it's, it's, it's nice for people to see this emergence happen but it doesn't automatically mean that they're going to become top players. There's lots of pitfalls along the way. Uh, for young lads who break into, into, into club teams when they're 18, 19, 20 years of age. Yeah, I was talking to Paki Bonner earlier and he said that he doesn't think Mick will utilise the younger lads come this Slovakia game, it's way too early. Would you agree with that? Well, I think, you know, Mick is, um, is a very clever and experienced manager and I'm sure he's assessing these players very, very closely. Uh, I'm sure he's busy going to matches. And then there are the judgments he has to make. He's been reluctant initially to play uh, Connolly, and then uh, he was kind of proved right in that he wasn't quite up to it when he when he was thrown into the big match in Switzerland. But um, you know, he, it, it depends on the form of other players. It's interesting that Shane Long is playing quite regularly now at Southampton and playing better. Dave McGoldrick is in outstanding form for Sheffield United without scoring any goals. Um, so, you know, I think again Mick will be reluctant to throw them in to a game as, as important as this Fakia match is. But if, if they continue to play well, this is only early January, if they continue to play at a top level and score goals, then I think Mick is going to have to consider them very seriously when it, when it comes to the build-up to the Slovakia game in particular. I think Mick is very keen on game time as well. And you see the likes of Troy Parrish, who may be training at the top level at the moment, but he's not getting his game. Would, would a bit of a loan spell for Troy be, be you know, advisable now? Or well, what I said you... that earlier in the season, that I thought it was unlikely. Even when Harry Kane missed a game or two early in the season, he went for... Uh, Song to play centre forward or Lucas Moura. Now we're seeing that the case, similar case last weekend. Harry Kane is not in the picture and Song plays centre forward, Moura plays in the wing. And we see what happens through the window. Uh, I think he, he'll, be, he'll be on the bench for Spurs. He be, may get close to the action. He's obviously one they rate highly that they've promoted him to that standard he's in the first team squad. But it's hard to see him getting regular games in the first team before the Slovakia match. And remember, the match with Slovakia isn't a trial game for Mick. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a do-or-die game. It's a once-off. We've got to win it by hook or by crook, tactics, whatever, whatever it takes to win that game. Mick and the team uh, have got to do it. And otherwise, it's over. The dream of hosting some home games yeah. at the Euros is over. So it's not about being nice, about potential, about the future well-being of the game in Ireland. It's about focusing on the, the, the means and the opportunity to win that game with whatever players he has available to But him. then you look at the experience as well, and then Glenn Whelan, what he's gone through, he could be out of game time now as well. Does Mick have a big headache going into, into this game? Look, at Mick is experienced enough, he knows how to deal with headaches, he knows how to assess these things, he knows you can never bank on what team you're going to have until an hour or two before the game. It's always like that in management, you have a team in your head, but different things happen along the way that you can't control. Players are playing matches for the clubs, you can't control whether they get injured, they get hurt, whether they lose form. When they come in to train with you, you can't control whether they get a kick, in, in the training or whether they trip up or whether they, they have a slight tear. You, you can have a situation where a player wakes up in the morning of a match with a creak in his neck and it can, it can see him extraordinarily bad luck. But these things happen when you're a manager, when you're a manager and you're experienced, you learn how to deal with these things. You learn to have every possible um, in 
awkwardness <laughs> covered mm. and to just deal with it as if you expected it to happen and you, you pick the team that's available on the day. So Mick won't be banking on anyone being fit or everyone being fit. He will cover all the options uh, that he need to have before the Slovakia game. Um, moving to headaches uh, off the pitch, um, the FEI we know this week appointed some of the new directors. Uh, is this begin the beginning of important reform? I think the, some of the important reform had already begun. I was disappointed by the, the Aidan Horden report. I thought the FAI and the personnel that were nominated by the FAI to be part of it uh, were inadequate really and didn't represent football very well. Um, I had the opportunity to say that to Aidan Horden after the report, but unfortunately not before the report or during, during the time period of the negotiations or the discussions. So I think there's still an awful lot of reform to come, even, even on some of the detail of that report, the, particularly the, the personnel on the Football Management Committee, which for me is the, is the most important football committee in, uh, in that report, or in the FAO's uh, structure underneath the board. But I think the, the appointment of the three new directors, and particularly the independent chairman, Roy Barrett, has been a very, a very important uh, achievement and appointment and I think Roy will have a very strong influence as will the other independent directors. I also think that the, the six and then became seven uh, new directors have, have played a part in trying to get to a stage where we know how bad things are and trying to find a solution and I think they're to be credited for that. They're, they're all volunteers, they're good people who know the game, who've been involved in the game, but weren't part of the previous regime, with the exception of Don Conway. I think the sooner the better he's off the stage completely because he was part of the 14-year the era of disrepute, I'd say, of, of uh, mismanagement, of poor leadership, and he was part of that, and he stood idly by for too long. So I think he needs to be off the stage, the sooner the better that the new directors get, get a, a foothold on things and get things moving towards the form, reforms we all want to see happen. Will they come up against, um, I suppose, challenges in terms of dealing with the people who maybe are part of the old regime who are still in the FAI? Um, well, I think their responsibility will be to change the culture and to deal with the people who supported and implemented the culture that was there and the culture, culture that was imposed from, from the previous leadership. Those people will have to be, in my view, they'll have to be dispensed with and they'll have to be changed, a lot of change in there. Uh, but I think there was recognition at the last AGM that that change had to come from the membership that attended the AGM and from the representatives of the council that asked difficult questions of the new board were in place. So I think there's a willingness on the majority of people, but there's still supporters of the old, old regime around the place that need to be moved on away, away from areas of influence in the game. Has the change given you pause for thought? A lot of people want you in there. There is an appetite. Uh, is now the time for you to take up a role in the FEI and bring your expertise to the table? A lot of people think it is. Well, you know, that's interesting to hear. I don't hear so much of that. Um, but what I have said when I've been asked that question before, if and when the new directors in place, and, and particularly the independent directors, and if and when it will happen that there will be a new CEO in place, if those people then decide they want to come and talk to me about a possible role um, within football in Ireland or development of football or the FAI in the future, I'd certainly be willing to talk to them about that. I, it's. Uh, I have to say it's been tough being on the outside for so long, um, you know, I, I did have a lot of experience in the game. I'd, I'd been one of the few managers who played in the, in the AUL, the Leinster Junior, the Amateur League, the Leinster Senior League, <laughs> and schoolboy football, and colleges and universities <laughs> football, but never got a game in the League of Ireland, but ended up as the national manager. So maybe that could, I have some credit in the bank in relation to my involvement in the game. But, you know, it's for that other sounds like you're selling yourself now, no, Brian. No, you're no, selling no, yourself I, for I'm a role here. I'm laughing at myself, Neil. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about it today. 
of all the different leagues I played in, but never got to play in the top league. And yet I'm such an advocate for the League of Ireland. But, you know, it, it, it's for other people to decide if I was to have any part in the future of the game. But, you know, I... I, well, I, let's say, let me put this way, if, if, uh, if Roy Barrett comes to you tomorrow and says, take any role of your choice, Brian, <laughs> what, what would that be? What would you like to do? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that's, uh, that's not a likely situation to arise. And that's for, you know, that, that's for the board, of Paul Cook and the other members that are currently involved, and Dick Shakespeare and... and um, all those people, Dave Morden, that are currently involved with, with the new directors to d discuss the big future and the possibilities and the people and direction they want to go. So I, I, I wouldn't be, you know, presumptuous about it or, or, or encouraging any of that. That's, that, that's, they've, they've taken on the role. They've been brave and courageous to win there. I don't know why, because there's an awful lot to be done. An awful lot of time needs to be applied. There'd be a lot of heartache along the way, but they have, they have had the courage to go and, 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 and say, yes, I'm prepared to play my part. So I, I wish them well, and if they ever want to come and ask for any opinion or advice to me, I, I will be there to give, that, give my opinion. Okay, remember the dinner bell's ringing, so I'll let you go. It's, Thanks it's for time talking to, go to us. It's time to go and get me off the hook on this one. <laughs> Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Thank you.